Preparations are underway for an American Freedom Convoy like the one we've seen in Canada with truckers protesting vaccine mandates. National correspondent Logan Raddick live on Capitol Hill. He has the details there. Good morning. Sean, good morning. And that People's Convoy here in the U.S. will begin tomorrow in Adelanto, California. And over the course of 11 days, they'll drive across the country, ending right here in the D.C. region. But the organizers say they don't plan on entering Washington, D.C. itself, but that they'll clog up the Beltway in Maryland and Virginia. We've had a number of uh, smaller convoys uh, reaching out to us. There's some coming up from Arizona. Uh, there's some coming down from Montana, from Nebraska. Um, up from Texas. Um, they're coming in from all over the place. Now here on Capitol Hill, Capitol Police are already making preparations. The Capitol fence, if you recall, that went up after January 6th, that will be going up again with the barbed wire on the top. However, the fence has not been uh, going up just yet. It'll be uh, put up again later this week. Now, authorities also say they're going to be monitoring this convoy that's coming across the country, but the organizers of the convoy say they're working with local law enforcement to abide by agreements that they set with them. Again, this is all supposed to start tomorrow. A lot of people here in Washington, D.C. are concerned, but then there's people like Senator Rand Paul who is encouraging this convoy and says uh, that they should be clogging up roads across the country. Back to you. Yeah, Logan, what we've seen um, in, in Canada, the protesters there, they have demands, right? They want the mandate to stop so they can cross the border without showing proof of vaccination and continue to do their jobs. Are there demands from the truckers here in the United States that could be met that maybe could halt this protest, or is it just going on as scheduled? I mean, they're pretty similar demands here, Sean. These truckers uh, don't want those restrictions, especially with Canada. Canada right now not letting people who are unvaccinated leave their country. So uh, this really kind of has that similar message. It'll be interesting to see the reaction here in Washington, D.C. We know that Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, has come down heavy handed. But we know this event is organized. It's beginning tomorrow and in 11 days they'll be here in the D.C. area. And keep in mind that a week from now is the State of the Union. All members of Congress are invited. Uh, that was not the case last year when President Biden gave his 100 day address. So uh, a perfect storm setting up in terms of the president giving an address to Congress here and these truckers coming in. Yeah. All right. We'll continue to follow that story more. National correspondent Logan Raddick live there at the Capitol. Logan, thank you. Joining us now to discuss is Republican Congresswoman from South Carolina, member on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Nancy Mace. Congresswoman, welcome. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'd like to start with your reaction to the reports of a U.S. trucker convoy forming and heading to Washington, D.C. Do you support this effort? I, I do, and I support the First Amendment. I support peaceful protesting. Uh, we've seen the devastation that COVID-19 and the the authoritarian policies that have hurt our supply chain, it's hurt our kids, it's hurt manufacturing, it's hurt our entire country economically. Um, and so I support these folks. Uh, if you look at Canada and what they did in Canada, these truckers, I mean, over 90% of them are vaccinated. So what are you talking about when, when Canada freezes their bank accounts and arrests them? I mean, it's sort of crazy, but people ought to stand up and stand against this sort of thing. And we've seen it here in the U.S. Uh, with mandates for vaccinations and masks. And we've seen how detrimental these mandates have been on everyone across the board. Mm. I'd like to ask you about uh, your scheduling plans in the coming weeks. Uh, CPAC is happening this Thursday. Uh, do you plan to attend and what do you hope comes out of the conference? I, I'm not attending. Uh, we are in district this week. Um, I have a very large district and my focus when I'm not in D.C. voting uh, is to raise my kids here in the low country at home and to be here meeting the needs of my constituents. I try to limit my travel so that I can be home as much as possible serving the community that elected me to do the job. And I've got, um, I'm a single working mom and uh, I have my kids this week. And so it's really important that I have that time with them, take them to school. In fact, I was a little bit late this morning because I was dropping uh, my kids off at school. So well, I appreciate y'all's patience on that too. Well, thank you for joining us. Very uh, happy to speak with you. Uh, as you point out, CPAC not on the agenda, but let's look ahead. Uh, State of the Union address with the president. All of Congress is invited. Uh, they do have to wear a face mask if they attend. Do you plan on being in the audience? I'm, yeah, I'm not attending that either. Okay. <laughs> so unless, you know, unless we're, the only time I go to DC is when we're voting. Sure. And so um, I really, when, I, when I'm not in D.C. voting, I'm back home with my kids and, and meeting the needs of my constituents. I had over a thousand meetings, uh, my staff and I, my office last year and my first year. 
an office with different stakeholders and folks in the district. And so uh, it's year two, and we got to continue uh, that work that we're doing and that we started last year. And I know you are uh, out campaigning, meeting with voters, yeah. as you say, and of course, uh, hoping mm -hmm. to seek reelection. You said recently that you could do so uh, without the support of Donald Trump. Uh, talk to me about the decision. Uh, how's your campaign going so far? Would you like the support of the 45th president backing I, your campaign? I, well, I didn't have it in the primary in 2020, and we and we still won. Um, and so I work very hard. I represent a swing district. It's different than most districts in the country, Republican districts. In fact, I flipped the seat from Democrat to Republican, and uh, we sort of marched to the beat of our own drum. But I am conservative and fiscally conservative, and I have a great record and. Uh, one of my opponents who's running against me and, and trashing me all the time is actually a never Trumper, sort of the irony in all of this. And when you compare records, when when President Trump was uh, cutting back taxes, my opponent was uh, raising them. When he was working on criminal justice reform, I was working on criminal justice reform, and I was working to reduce taxes. And my opponent was working against those things. And so, you know, I, um, I like the record that I have represents my district. I am truly fiscally conservative, and I think that, that votes matter and policy matters particularly right now when our country is so divided and mm -hmm. everyone's just bashing one another. What are we going to do? How, what solutions are we going to provide for the people that we represent for our state and our nation? Because it's not good enough to say the other side is bad. Um, Republicans have created spending and they've been a part of inflation and, and some of the economic issues that we're facing today. What are we going to do that's better when we're in the majority? And so that's what I'm focused on is on policy um, and not attacking other folks. And you can look at my record. It's very strong. In fact, when uh, President Trump signed the First Steps Act into law. Uh, shortly thereafter, I, saw, I had a bill that was signed into law that was a, a prison reform bill in the state of sure. South Carolina modeled after some of the provisions within that legislation. So I'll put my, my record up against anyone's. All right. Well, we will be watching, indeed, midterms this year quickly approaching. Congresswoman Nancy Mace joining us on the program. Congresswoman, thanks so much.